wonderful. It's Monday again, another Monday, and we are back again on today's woman on COB USA Radio. And we are continuing with the festivities. It's the season of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and it's Merry Christmas to everybody. So as oh, you know, as we're talking about Jesus, last week we focused on Jesus as a gift, as an indescribable, unspeakable, as a worthy gift. And today we want to look at the mother of Jesus, Mary. We are looking at Mary's journey. And so today our topic is the woman's journey to glory. We are looking at Mary as the mother of Jesus. Look at, you know, her journey, the choice that she was of God to be the person to bring into fulfillment, you know, the prophecy as said in the book of Isaiah, that a virgin was going to be with child and conceive and give birth to a son who will be called Emmanuel. And the same scripture, when you go to the book of Matthew, there we are understanding that this child, that this virgin, going to conceive is going to be called Emmanuel and the meaning was given to us it means God with us so God who in time past was invisible where Moses could not behold his glory as you know face to face has become God in the book of John said he became flesh and dwelt amongst men so we are looking at Jesus and Mary so I'm going to go to our scripture. And as usual, we want to thank all who are faithful, always with us, and just say your questions, your contributions are invited. And so we're going to go to the book of, uh, you know, Matthew. And you go to the book of Matthew chapter one. It's back to the very beginning of Matthew. And you look at the verse 18 to 20. And also we're going to go to the book of Luke. So we are, we're going to look at, Mary's selection, Mary's, you know, visitation and all that. So you go to the book of Matthew chapter 1, 18 to 20. Then I said, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found. So the emphasis is found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Verse 19 says, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. So the emphasis is public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce. We are looking at the word divorce her quietly. And 20 says, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared. So we are seeing an angelic visitation here. Appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David. And now we see the link to the root of David. Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And 21 says, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from the sins. So we are looking at the woman's journey to glory. We are looking at Mary, a young virgin. And as indicated, this is a prophecy that is being realized because it's been foretold in the book of Isaiah. We know that a child will be born to us. The government will be upon his shoulder. It's going to be called the wonderful counselor. So it's, it's already been spoken in time past. And so this virgin, among all virgins, was privilege, that's Mary, to be the chosen virgin. So if you look at in our time today, there are so many descriptions of the mother of Jesus, some say the mother of the Savior, the Virgin Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the son, the mother of the Son of God. So Mary has numerous names that are being used to describe her, and we are looking at this beginning. But the question we are trying to look at is this young lady who is privileged to have this unorthodox conception, or if you like, unusual or unexpected con conception because a woman who is, you know, promising to marry to somebody else, Bible says before they would come together, before anything intimate would have happened, we find her to be pregnant. And I know we always say, oh, by the Holy Spirit. But today I want us to look at how unusual, how bizarre and how weird that must have seen, even to Mary herself. The angelic visitation was frightening in itself, but the actual, 
it's, it was promised, but to actually live it wasn't something that was easy. And today we are saying that you may have a glorious end, but the process from the beginning to the glory is not always that bright. Because if you are in the shoes of Mary, it would have been very, very frightening to be a person who is pregnant. How would you explain it to Joseph? And of course, it was difficult to explain it to Joseph because Bible says, even though he was a faithful man, even though he was faithful to the law, even though he decided not to disgrace her publicly, still it was going to be difficult. Because in the society, a woman who is betrothed to somebody or promised in marriage, if you are going to receive a certificate that says you've been divorced, that was a stigma, that was a tag, that wasn't a pleasant one for you and your family. And so however he wanted to do it quietly or not quietly, however he wanted to do it not to disgrace her, the impact yet the same was going to be huge. The impact, the blow was going to be tough on Mary. And so we are looking at it to say, that the journey of Mary came with suffering. The journey of Mary came with some difficulty. Yes, she's blessed among women as the pronouncement was from the angel. Yes, even her, her cousin Elizabeth confirmed that. But if you were in Mary's shoes at that time, it wasn't just comfortable. It was very, very, very difficult. And so we, we wanna just lift up somebody to say that even though now in your life you may see to be going through a hardship. You could be a student who has to work at the same time. You could be a mother who has kids that you're raising. And the journey is very difficult. Like Mary's journey was difficult. And as we get, we go further, we're going to see how difficult her life was. But the end is that which makes us look towards that goal. So for Mary, it wasn't that rosy to be that young person who would have to say, I'm pregnant, but I'm innocent. I'm pregnant, but I'm not guilty. I'm pregnant, but I've not done anything wrong. It wasn't as easy as it seemed, but with God on our side, we're able to do all things. And so this is Mary's journey. We're gonna to go to the book of Luke. And you look at two and, you know, from one to seven. And the Bible says at that time, this is the New King James Version of the Bible, in those days that uh, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. And so this was the time that you know, Mary and Joseph were found in. So verse 4 says, Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with, his, with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, all the, all the days were completed for her to be delivered. So you, you look at this, this is a young lady who is pregnant and the pregnancy is as bizarre as can be. The Holy Spirit has overshadowed her and she's carrying a child, not through human conception. And at the same time, there's a decree that is mandatory. It's not a choice, you know, you have to comply. And they were supposed to go to Bethlehem to have, you know, the census done. But think about a woman who was highly pregnant Think about the mode of transportation. Think about how the journey was, the risk involved of traveling the desert at that time. And Bible says that this young lady and Joseph were going through this thing. They were journeying to have, you know, they are also census taken to be part of the census, to be counted among the family they come from. And Bible says Mary was expecting a child. So I wanted say that what she had conceived was a blessing, the fruit of the womb that comes from the Holy Spirit, the promise of a child who will be a savior. That is a blessed place to be in. I'm sure the Bible says she even pointed all these things in her heart. It was a good thing, but the journey was tedious. The journey was very frustrating because I, I know that as pregnant women, you wouldn't want to be traveling in a terrain that is, you know, a desert. You wouldn't want 
want to travel as hard as it was at that time, but they didn't have a choice. And that was the married situation. So you look at verse six of Luke two as we're reading, and the New Living Translation says, and while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. Verse seven says, she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available to them. How sad and how very disadvantageous to be Mary at that time, a woman who is highly pregnant, away from her comfort zone, going to be counted because it was a season of a decree for a census and everybody was mandated to be part of it. And if you were to be married at that time, it was unpleasant. But unfortunately for them, because of everybody going to be counted, the rooms were occupied and they had to give birth to the Messiah in the manger. I know we always focus on the humble state of our Messiah being born in the manger, but think about Mary, a pregnant woman, and that was all that was open to her. I don't know your struggle goals. I may not know how difficult your life is, but we are children of God, and we are speaking to believers who believe that they were made in the image of God. We are speaking to women. We are speaking to men. We are speaking to young people who are created in the image of God to say the drama, the book of Jeremiah is very true, and it's a very popular scripture that is very loved, that I know the plans that I have for you, not of evil, but of good to take you to expected end, because God is very faithful. Faithful. And so once the prophecy says this son that you're going to give birth to, he will be a savior from the sins of the people. It was a great thing because our sin had separated us from God. It was this Jesus Christ who was supposed to be a gift for us, who was going to be a mediator to bring us back to God. And Mary was the blessed instrument, if you like, the blessed version, the blessed mother, the blessed person of all people at that time who had been chosen, yet she's dealing with a manger, yet she's dealing with traveling on a very dry and deserted environment, and yet she is the mother of the most important person of the world, the savior of the world. So sometimes your background can be right, your mission can be right, your agenda can be right, but before you reach that goal is a struggle. Before you reach that goal is a suffering. Before you reach that goal is a difficulty. And Bible says we should count it all joy. And I know that Mary, even as she was going through that, that was something that was difficult to be in but she persisted we never heard she complaining and saying i'm not gonna go because by her going to bethlehem to be counted she was also fulfilling a scripture she was fulfilling how the messiah was supposed to be born and so everything that you're going through as a child of god whether even it's through your own choice or whether it's divine as you begin to hang on to god and persist and not give up you arrive and that's mary's story before she will be called the blessed mary before she will even be called a saint in some circles before so many people will be named after her because she's a virtuous woman now the journey for mary wasn't always easy and we are using this to say the woman's journey to glory is never easy the woman's journey to glory is not without pain the woman's journey to glory is not without struggles but if we don't give up if we don't lose heart, if we don't become disappointed, if we don't murmur and complain, when the glorious days come, it will be beautiful. And that's marriage journey. The mother of the savior of the whole world. You would have thought she would be in a five-star hotel enjoying the best amenity, but no, she didn't enjoy that. The end may not look as the present is portraying, but if we don't lose hope, the just shall live by faith. She believes that she is going to conceive a child who will be the savior of the world, and that's who she is, but the journey was not without difficulty. I want to acknowledge the people that are with me. 
I see Mrs. Natasha Graham Mensa is watching. God bless you, elder's wife. And we have Louise Johnson Henry. She says, good afternoon. Merry Christmas, everyone. Blessings. Merry Christmas to you too. And blessings as well. We have one of, one of our deacons, Deacon Prince of Mwako. He's on. And he says, blessing and honor, glory and power. Be unto the ancient of days, Jesus Christ, the visible light. God bless you, woman of God. Always a blessing to listen to you. God bless you, Deacon. It's a blessing to have you here too. God bless you. And we also have Winifred. She's on there. And Echo Bonnie Elder is on there. God bless you, man of God. We are talking about the woman's journey to glory. And we are saying that the end, there may be a prophecy. You may have a very good dream. You may have a very good plan in place. But sometimes the struggles, the difficulties may want to speak a different language. But we, like Mary, will not lose heart because there's the journey. The destination will be beautiful. Yet from the point one to the end, maybe some struggles. And Mary went through her own. But the end has been glorious. And so we want to look at another scripture and say that when you go to the book of Matthew, chapter 2, I will look at 13 and I'll skip to the 16. It says, when they had gone an angel of the Lord appeared to them. So this, this is what we're establishing, that, you know, when the wise men went to talk to Herod and say, look, we have come to worship the new one king bible says that he was disturbed sometimes your journey and what you are for your journey and what you stand for your journey and the glory i heard makes some other people uncomfortable and that also prunes you to an attack that also exposes you to an attack and so bible says that herod when he heard about that whoa i'm a king here i know my family members how is it that i'm not aware that somebody is born who is also a king and he felt threatened and he wanted to kill the child Jesus. But you know, when you read the scripture, as Mary was a fulfillment of a prophecy that a virgin will conceive a child, he will be Emmanuel, God with us. Today, God is with you. God is with me. God is with all of us. If we are children of God, no more are we seven an invisible God. He is God who used to be invisible in time past. He said, nobody can see me and live. In our time, he is God who is living in us. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, went and he has sent us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not far away from us. He is indeed God with us. He shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Well, the Holy Spirit lives in us. God is with us. And so as God is with them, as Herod was making a plan and a plot to destroy the vision, because this was a conception, a child who has been conceived. He survived conception. He's been born. He survived the desert. He survived a tedious journey. He survived being born into a manger. And there Herod says, I know you skipped what should have consumed you. Mary, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm not going to allow you to have peace. I'm going to seal that that promise that you have in God sends his angel. And that's what we are looking at in the book of Luke chapter 12, one to seven from the New Living Translation. At the time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decree that a census. So we have seen that. And we are saying that even being a part of the census wasn't very comfortable. And if she would go through all that, Herod, who are you to want to destroy? the glory that has been given to Mary. And so whatever the heroes of our times are, whatever the representation of the heroes of our time are, we shouldn't be afraid. Yes, it's scary. Yes, it's difficult. But you know, Mary had Emmanuel, God who is with us. And today you have the Holy Spirit, God's spirit, who knows all things, who searches all things, who is very powerful with you. Your journey may be tedious, as Mary's was tedious, but your glory is assured. And so you look at Matthew 2, 13, and I'm going to take that again. So when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. 
16 says, when Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. So when you think about this scripture, we are saying that Mary is that woman who conceives by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and she was threatened because that was about to have an impact on her relationship with Joseph. That was about to have an impact on her marriage. That was about to affect her such that there was the inclination in the heart of Joseph to I like what the Bible says to do it quietly, but whether you divorce quietly or not, the impact is still huge. He says, well, he was trying not to publicly disgrace her, but what would make somebody who is betrothed to you decide to leave you? It would still pose questions that would be difficult to answer. And so Mary has gone through that and she has escaped that. And after all that, Herod is trying to kill the very child that has been promised to her as a savior. And so, you know, whatever the Herods of our time are, as I promised you, the Holy Spirit is ever present with us. He would not forsake us. He will not leave us. Jesus, when he was telling his disciples in Matthew, he says, look, I'm with you till the end of age. Lo, I would never leave you. I am with you. God is with us. And so do not be afraid of the journey, how it's going to end. Do not be disappointed of what you see, of what you hear. Because I'm sure having to leave, first of all, we have to come to Bethlehem to have this baby born. That is tedious. Now we have to escape again to, to Egypt always away from our comfort zone, always away from familiar people, always away from family. But you know, everything you're going through, just as Mary was going through, is part of the process to take you to that expected end. So Bible said that God warned them. So even as Herod, because of Jesus, was committing murder, God caused them to escape it. Your journey as a woman to glory may come with things that are meant to shipwreck you, if you like to put it that way. Things that are meant to destruct you. Things that are meant to, you know, stagnate you. Things that are meant to retrogress you. Going back to Egypt wasn't pleasant because, you know, Israelites didn't know what Egypt means to them. Going back to Egypt wasn't a glorious place to be at that time, but it was a fulfillment of scripture. So what you know as a child of God is as long as you are in the will of God, as long as you're walking with God, as long as you allow him to lead you. For when the angel told Joseph that, you know, get up with the child and the mother and go to Egypt, you know what could have happened? Mary could have said, I'm not going. I'm not going. But in humility, she listened to what God has said. And there she saved herself. She saved her child. And she saved the promise of God through obedience. And so in our journey to glory, we need obedience because God always will resist the proud, but he will elevate the humble. I'm going to pause and acknowledge you as well with us. I see Dignos Doreen Crap of OKC is with us. God bless you. And one of our men, Christy Minta, is on there. God bless you, sir. And a great man isaiah po2 is also watching god bless you sir thank you all who are with me you can feel free to send your contributions your questions we are having an interactive se session so whatever you know you want to throw in there if you have any practical example just as mary who has been promised to be the woman to conceive and bring forth a savior i'm thinking if the Holy Spirit will overshadow me and let me bring forth a savior of the world that I shouldn't be afraid of the Herods. But yes, she had to go and hide in Egypt. There's a lesson there. Sometimes we need to retreat to fight another time. It's not every battle that you should take it on head on. Some things are not worth it. For Mary and Joseph, it wasn't worth it to stay at that time and deal with Herod, the destruction of Herod, the problems of Herod. They had to leave. 
Sometimes in your journey to greatness, you may need to retreat. It's not a sign of defeat. It's a sign of regrouping. Sometimes the retreat is good. The retreat is that which God has ordained. I don't know. You may be a woman. You have been in a journey to, you know, be in marriage with somebody and something has happened. And you have had to retreat your step. It's not that which means that you've been defeated. You are in waiting to be glorified. Mary was in waiting in Egypt to be glorified. There was nothing that was going to allow for the promise of a savior to be destroyed. Emmanuel, God is with us. The child was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit was going to make sure that this child survived. You know, I don't think Herod meant to just kill Jesus and leave the parents alone. As a mother, I wouldn't sit idle for my child to be killed. So there was danger that was posed to Joseph and Mary and Jesus as well. So the retreat to Egypt was God's protection. The woman's journey to glory is not without enmity. It's not without enemies. It's not without affliction. It's not without suffering. It's not without loneliness. Think about Egypt as a lonely place for Mary. You could also be lonely in your journey to glory because when we stand with God on that day, he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. But you know, we are walking on the narrow road and that road is the road of loneliness because the broad road is that which many people want to walk on. So look at Egypt as that place of loneliness. Look at Egypt as that place of sacrifice where you have to give up things. You have to give up family. You have to give up familiar things things. And sometimes in our journey to glory, we are looking at glory that is God. You know, we sing this song that says, our end, the glory of the Lord. He's the captain of Israel's host. You know, it's a song that I love so much, but it is the end that is a glory. But under his shadow, we are abiding so that the end, that glory will not miss. And so because Joseph and Mary were abiding under the shadow of the Holy Ghost, when the time for protection came, when he spoke, they listen. A woman who is journeying to glory, and if you're a child of God, you need to incline your ears to the direction of the Spirit. And in you doing that, sometimes you have to remove yourself from your comfort zone. Sometimes you have to remove yourself from your familiar environment. And Joseph and Mary had to deal with that. Mary had to go to Egypt. In the journey to glory is loneliness. I want to look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. And Jesus, Jesus was speaking here. And I said, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. The woman's journey to glory is not without persecution and insult, and is not without false accusation, because Mary is having to run to Egypt. A woman who is bearing a savior, running away, yes, sometimes we do have to run away. The battle is the Lord. We fight only at his command. And when he is not commissioned us to fight, we retreat silently. Jesus, at some point, will not even open his mouth to speak. Yet he's very eloquent. He has the spirit. He told us that even when we go somewhere, we shouldn't be afraid and worried about what we say because the spirit will teach us what to say. The spirit gives us utterance. But yet, at some point, Jesus was silent. That's what the Bible describes him. He was silent. It doesn't mean you were weak, but but in your journey to glory, I love this song that says, there are some things that I said, I'm about to say when I remember I am quiet. What do we remember? We remember the word of God. We remember the song salvation of God, a soft answer. You know, sometimes we are about to reply, we are quiet, not because we are timid, you know, just as Mary wasn't timid, but it was because she was a person who would listen to God, a woman of humility, a woman of obedience, respect for her spouse in respect to, because the Bible never said that the angel appeared to her. You know, the, 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 the father of uh, Samson, Manoah's story, when the woman would tell him what the angel said he wanted to see himself well we never hear of mary saying look you know what let the angel come and tell me we have to go to egypt in obedience and in humility she did retreat to egypt sometimes for you to have that glorious end 
you need to listen to God. And when he says, be silent, you have to be silent. When he said you need to retreat, you have to retreat. So what role does persecution play in our lives? Because you're looking at Jesus saying, you know, you are blessed when you, they insult you, when they persecute, when they falsely accuse you be, and do all kinds of evil, evil things against you because of me. And he says, at that point, you were blessed. So we are asking a question, what role that does persecution play? The Bible says that God is the one who will renew our strength as we wait on him. The persecution sometimes pushes us closer to God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I want to believe that maybe you've experienced it and I've experienced it. In our moment of persecution as children of God, it's not that we don't draw near to God, but the reality becomes very sure to us. The picture becomes evident that we don't have anybody but God. And so when we, when you are afflicted as a child of God, and if you have the spirit in you, you draw near to God. And God says, if we draw nigher to him, he will draw nigher to us. So for me, persecution draws us nigher to God because if the affliction is coming from men, whether it's false accusation or whether you are an innocent victim, you begin to realize that human nature, the corruption of the human nature, the betrayal of the human nature, and you begin to realize who do I have in heaven but God? There is no savior but God. And so persecution draws us closer to God. Persecution makes us rely on God because there we realize that man was supposed to be for me, but man is against me. But the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? He's never against us. So in the moment when you're afflicted, when you're persecuted, you begin to depend on him more. We should depend on him anyways. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he should direct your path. And because Joseph was a man who acknowledged God, because Mary acknowledged God, he was directing their path. A woman who is journeying to glory, acknowledge God. In all your ways, depend on him. Trust in him, he would direct you. And as they did, they never questioned why if you're God and you are all powerful, why tell me to run to Egypt? Why don't you send your host of angels to battle and do war on our behalf? Why run to Egypt? Yet in humility, they did. And so in humility, as you listen to God, your journey to glory is assured. Let me acknowledge other people who have joined us. Ebo Dazi is here. God bless you, sir. Deacon Albert Dakun, God bless you. Deacon, greetings to Auntie Jane. I see all the way from North Carolina, Mrs. Lyndon Yaku is on there. God bless you, dear. And Ikria Chiyohene is here from New York. God bless you, ma'am. And I see Dickness Deborah Beeson is watching. God bless you. All of you, I'm thankful that you're with me. Do not be silent. If you have questions, go ahead. If you have contributions, go ahead and throw it out there. We are looking at the woman's journey to glory, and we are saying there may be a prophecy on your life, just as Mary recently received an angelic visitation announcing what was going to happen. She was going to be the mother of the Savior. The book of Isaiah said it means Emmanuel, God is with us. This is a powerful proclamation, yet this is the same person who is having to give birth to the Savior in the manger, yet this is the same person who is having to flee to Egypt an unfamiliar territory. And if you are an Israelite, Egypt wasn't a representation of the best of times in their history. That was a place of suffering and slavery. Yet they had to go there because in God's wisdom, this was to fulfill scripture. You may be going through hardships as you're journeying to glory, yet do understand that God makes all things beautiful in his time. And you know one thing I love about the word of God? It's very sure. It is amen. It comes to pass. The just shall live by faith. Sometimes we don't have the evidence because there was no evidence that says, look, that there was nothing that Herod did to show that he meant them harm. But when he listened to the, the spirit, the angelic visitation, Jesus was secure. And so what persecution does for us, it brings us closer to God. 
you look at Matthew chapter 2, 14 to 15, it says, so he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord has said through the prophet, out of Egypt, I called my son. So if we don't see with the eye of the spirit, certain things would not make sense to us. I'm getting very passionate here. Out of Egypt, I called my son. It was in fulfillment of scripture. We pray that in our journey, and you know, we know our journey is glorious because when God comes, this mortal body is going to take a mortal form. Bible describes that we're going to have a glorious state. Even as right now, Christ is washing us with the word and with water with his blood to make us a radiant church there is a glory ahead of us but you know in that journey to that glory we go through a lot we go through a lot of suffering a lot of pain and sometimes it makes us question god if you are that powerful why don't you intervene he says i'm all that powerful but my ways are not your ways i'm taking you back to egypt yes i did so much to take you out of egypt but you know why i'm taking you back to egypt because there I have a prophecy that needs to be fulfilled. And so that was what God was saying. Yet without the eye of the spirit, it would not make sense. Of all the places that we should run and hide, Egypt, and why are we having to run in the night? Yet in humility, in obedience, the sons of God who listen to God. Mary says, I'm just your humble servant. What a humble woman. And I pray that I'll be like that and you'll be like that, even in our journey to our glory. And so, you know, Bible says that they stayed in Egypt until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord said through the prophet, out of Egypt, I call my son. Our desire as children of God is to know that we were not by chance, we were not by accident, but God purposely created us to fulfill a mission, an assignment, a goal of God. And so as they were in link, in sync with the word of God, what happened was eventually they got to the destination. There is a glory ahead of you. And if you allow God, he will direct your path to that destination. So how can we cope outside of our comfort zone? Because we are talking about Egypt, 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 which is not a familiar place to marry, which is not a very good historical place for the Israelites. So how do we survive? As we are journeying to glory, how do we survive outside of our comfort zone? Look one. 26 to 28 from the New King James Version. We're going to look at what Mary said, what the angelic visitation did, and we'll look at that. So now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee, Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said, rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. So we in our comfort zone, we are surrounded by people who love us. In our comfort zone, we are surrounded by things that we are familiar with. In our comfort zone, everything is rosy. But outside of our comfort zone, we can only survive by clinging onto the word of God. We can only survive by having an assurance that God is with us. And for us in our time, it's much easier to realize that God is with us because his spirit, he says, look, woman, in John chapter four, when Jesus encountered that woman, the Samaritan woman says, no longer do you need to go to Jerusalem or any mountain or anything to worship God because God is spirit. He's seeking for the true worshipers who are worshiping spirit in truth. So he's spirit. He can be everywhere. And he has chosen to inhabit our unholy tabernacle by inhabiting as he has made us holy. And so even in the midst of discomfort, even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst of difficulty, you rely on God and know he's with you. Look, I love that scripture that says, when you walk through the fire, 
meaning that do not be deceived that you will not encounter the fire. When you walk through the rivers, it will not flood you. Do not be deceived that it's going to be always good, but you know he is with you. And so in that discomfort, as she went to Egypt, you may be in a, a zone that is not comfortable for you. You see, you sense in your spirit that you are working hard. You are a student. You are studying. You are a woman. You are working hard. You are doing all that for your family. You have an imagery of the beautiful dominion that God gave, and you're not seeing it. Well, do not lose heart. Emmanuel is with you. Emmanuel was with Mary. And as Mary depended on Emmanuel, even in Egypt, Bible said they stayed there until Herod disappeared. The Herods of our time will disappear. They may not disappear now, but eventually they will disappear. And as we know that Emmanuel is with us, God is with us in our discomfort, know he's with you. He's the one that softens the blow for us. He's the one that, that teaches our hands to war. He's the one that strengthens us. And so as you depend on him, wonderful. I see that. So Mommy Henrietta has joined me. Welcome, Zomami. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for my time. It's, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> I'm getting very passionate here. We are talking yes. about the woman's journey. And we are saying that I, I believe that my life and, you know, my mom and my life has not been a, a, an easy life. But I thank God I went through all that. Because then when somebody is going through a difficulty, you are able to tell them that we are not serving a God that everything was okay with, but when we cried, he was with us. He, it didn't right. know, you, you see us and we are joyous and it's right. not always rosy. And I know that you also have a person who has suffered loss because I remember when mommy died. So we, we are, when we talk, you know, I think that God deals with us in how we know him and how we've seen him. And I'm here trying to reach out to somebody today to say that you sense in your spirit that there's greatness ahead of you. You sense in your spirit that there's glory ahead of you and i i used to have a friend who says i've done no wrong to nobody so i don't mm. understand what i'm going through i mm -hmm. do understand you may be a very good person you will not head a fly but the journey of life is such that the journey to glory comes with suffering it comes with hardship because yes. in this life we will have tribulations but be of good cheer have overcome the world yes. and some people ahead of us have made it and we are also crawling to make it but one thing is god is with us emmanuel yes. and i love that scripture that says this version will give birth to a child and that child is gonna be emmanuel god emmanuel. is with us and god so in us. your journey do not just look at the present to say god if you are god and if you love me if you care for me why am i going through that mary went through that Yes. But today, I think it's one of the most popular names of girls because <laughs> of Mary. Yes. All right. So, mommy. So, I, I'm, I'm just gonna let you just jump in, and before that, let me acknowledge Dickness and I'm so of OKC. God bless you, and I see also Mama Grace Ajiman of New York. She says, "Oh yes, He is with us. Amen and amen. God bless you. He would never leave us. He will mm. never forsake us. Not even when we have sinned, He will talk against the sin, but He will not allow men to destroy us. Not even when we are sick, He is with us." Us. In death, in life, he is with us. If we live, we live for him. If we die, we die for him. And yes. so even in Egypt, Emmanuel was with Mary. So mommy, go ahead. Yes. I mean, you I just when I've been following you, and I just it's so true. You know, every journey that everyone goes through is unique in its own right. Mm -hmm. And God takes us through these journeys, want to build us up for his glory and for his greatness. And so that's it's although we when we go through such challenges like you were saying you face persecutions you face you know people discouraging you you face all type of things but to realize that you know god is taking us through this for a purpose he's taking us yeah. through for a reason and he's yeah. building us up and he's preparing us for his glory so every woman should have who is listening on the line and every man who's also on the line we have to realize that every journey has its challenges nothing Life is free, you know, some people say that, but in life, nothing is easy. And the Bible yes. has never told us as believers that life is going to be easy. No, mm -hmm. he is equipping us with his word so that in times of hardship, in times 
where we feel discouraged and times where we are being persecuted and times when we do feel dismayed, we have our strength in the Lord. And as you said, God is with us in every aspect of our lives. Mary went through so much, you know, being a virgin, she was not married and then she was pregnant. I'm sure people around were asking, how does she get pregnant? Who does she, who does she sleep with to get pregnant? Uh-huh. Many things would be said. <laughs> um, even if they weren't asking questions, they were accusing her. Oh, she's mm-hmm. getting married, but she was sleeping around with somebody else. Yeah. All through it all, she endured everything because God was going to reveal his glory through her. So yeah. we have to allow God to do what he wants to do in our life. We shouldn't question God, but we should ask the Lord, God, what are you trying to tell me during this time? What are you trying to teach me during this journey? Um, You said something earlier. Yes, when you you have your testimony, I think we can all testify to the glory of God. Even Mm -hmm. at the end of the year, we can sit down and reflect on our own personal journeys and how God has been so faithful to us. So when we stand up and if we're laughing, if we're happy, it's not because, you know, we're just happy, but we (laughs) understand the journey in which we have felt. Taken. We understand why God has taken us through that journey and how he has strengthened us and how his has revealed has been re- revealed in our lives. So it is very, very true that you will face those hardships, you will face those frustrations, but God is our strength. You know, we say yes. that we say captain of Israel hosts, our mm-hmm. strength by grace. Yes. It is the grace of God that gives us the strength to endure his word mm-hmm. rule. It's his word that gives us direction and his end is the mm-hmm. our is his glory hallelujah we have to understand that we will go through these hardships but god is with Mm -hmm. he will never forsake us he will never leave us but he is taking us through this this walk in this journey of life so Mm -hmm. that glory can be revealed in our lives that we can testify to his glory not to the glory of any man not that we can reference oh this person helped me to reference that god helped me god Mm -hmm. had me the holy spirit Mm -hmm. directed me and it's because of his grace that I am before him for you, before you all this morning. Amen. 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 I see a comment here. I'm going to read it so we look into it. So, the great presiding elder of OKC, Professor Elder Kwame Ketia, <laughs> he's on there. He says, Ma, how can we relate to Joseph in Mary's life to ours when she was going through the storms? You know, that's what we are trying to do today to say that it, it, w- it will be very challenging to be Mary. Why well, choose me, as you were saying, to be that woman? Because I know some people mark calendars when people get married to say, oh. oh, you married in June. And once you're pregnant, we want to backdate the clock yeah. and, you know, and, and do that. So uh, she went through the storms. It's like, you just got married and all of a sudden you're pregnant already and all mm-hmm. that. It wasn't easy. And as we started, we said Joseph had conceived in his heart to divorce her. And he, in his mind, he says, I'm, I'm not going to publicly disgrace. I'm going to do it quietly. You can't divorce somebody quietly. The stigma, the heartache, the emotional t- turmoil, the time wasting and all that, you know, that that's even another topic for another day. But yeah. how can we relate when we are going through the storms is to know that I love the scripture that, you know, when you go to the book of Samuel and God was talking and he told, um, you know, um, no, uh, let me let me go to the book of First Samuel when uh, they were about to uh, anoint the sons of J.C., in the book of First Samuel chapter 16. And, you know, the, the man of God Samuel was, was looking at the, the, the sons and he had picked somebody he was going to anoint in his mind. This person looks very good to be a king. I'm going to, uh, uh, the book of First Samuel 16, I'm going to look from verse 5 downwards to about maybe verse uh, 7. Let me go there quickly. All right. So it says that, verse 6, great. It says, when they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And so you are saying, how do we survive the storm? The Lord looks at the heart. In Mary and Joseph, there were innocent people who had been right. chosen by God for his glory. And I'm sure they would have gone through criticism 
because one moment you are here with us, you're going through the census, all of a sudden you have a child and you're, you're going to Egypt. What do you tell your family? Why are you going to Egypt and all that? There will be criticism because you guys, you are shady because one moment your wife is married, the next moment she's pregnant. If we right. look at the clock, something is off here. This right. child doesn't even look like you and all that. People can spin things, but God looks at the heart. And yes. so if you're going through a storm, and you know, when I when I started, I read Matthew chapter 5, verse 11, where Jesus was saying something, says, blessed, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Sometimes people, because we are limited by spiritual eyesight, we read things differently. The person that is not our enemy may be perceived as our enemy. And you know, some person will be persecuted because he says, where is the newborn king of the Jews so we can worship Herod? He's a newborn king. He's no threat to you. But you know, in those days, kinship was a big deal. So how yes. am I going to be the king here? It's not for my family and I love it. So I'm going to target and I'm going to kill him. But when your storm, Emmanuel is with you. In your storm, God knows your heart. In your storm, God knows you. So in, instead of being right with the circumstance, let us be right with God. And as we trust him, as we rely on him, he's the best navigator, whether it be the storm of the sea, whether it be a desert storm, whatever kind of storm it is, with God is for us. If God is for us, with God on our side, we will never be swallowed. It's not easy to do that. But even in your tears, know that God is with you and yes. so we said so we have tasted we have tried him and we yes. know we God's know. right it's true so mommy you can yes it. and one thing we have to understand is that you know when God was writing our stories he didn't consult man to write mm -hmm. our stories or our journeys and mm -hmm. it's that we shouldn't be so much concerned at what people will say people will talk mm -hmm. well people talk just to talk but we shouldn't look at those things we should put our focus on what God has said. When God was speaking to us individually in our, in our individual home, when we were crying out to him in our particular situation, there was no one standing to our left or standing to our right. It was between mm -hmm. us and God. And so with that being said, we shouldn't allow what someone will say to you um, to discourage the journey that God has set in front of you. Because if you're not careful, you will cause what someone has said to call you to cause you to divert or to jump out of the lane in which God has told you to do. You know, even sometimes a lot of us, even in the schooling that we're, we, we go to school when we're in college and universities, you know, we know what the Lord has told us. Yes. And maybe what the Lord has told us is not maybe what is in line with what people around us agree with, but we know what God has said to us. And so you have to take what God has said because he knows what is best for you. I, I use my example, when I started school, um, university, I, everyone around me said, be a nurse because nursing, you can definitely find a job. So mm -hmm. I went to be a nurse and I struggled. I struggled mm -hmm. so much so, and I knew it got to a point when I told myself, this is not in line for me. This is not what God has purpose for me. And I prayed about it. And I took, I took the route of business into accounting and people discouraged me left and right. Oh, accounting, but, oh, you won't find a job, all this hoopla. But I did what God wanted me to do. And so we do what God wants us to do. If we follow the voices of man, we will make big mistakes in our lives and we'll make mm -hmm. decisions that we personally will face those consequences. So we should put our hope in God, put our trust in God, and know that the journey that we are partaking in is him who has written our story. Mm -hmm. Why we should take this route. And I give glory to God that I did take the route that I took because before I even got out of school, I had a job. And I did that job for so many years. It has brought so many benefits. I was able to give birth to three of my four children at that job to the glory of God. So we should listen to the voice of God. Take the direction of God. Do not be distracted by man. And understand that your journey is your journey. Your mm. journey isn't your sister's journey. Your journey isn't your brother's journey. Your journey mm. isn't your father's journey or your mother's journey. It is your mm. journey. And we have to be attentive with our ears to the Holy Spirit. That he mm -hmm. should tell us what we should do. And as he directs us, we should do it. And when we do so, God will show himself mighty and his glory mm -hmm. will in our lives. When we grasp that understanding of believers, even though we go through the hardship, we have that reassurance and we have that, that confidence and that, and that joy in knowing that I'm going through. Yes, 
but I know that there's light at the end of this tunnel and the glory will prevail in my life. Amen. Amen. That's a very powerful analogy to give us from your own personal experience, because like you said, you go through unnecessary storms. It's my life. You've given me a commendation. You've given me a counsel, but I would have to still weigh it, you know, to see if it's in line with me. And sometimes it's hard. You go through unnecessary persecutions and accusations. It's like, oh, we told her to do this. She didn't do it. But yes. you told, and what is God saying? And I'm glad exactly. in your journey, God's will was done. And so when it comes to going through storms, like we are talking about Joseph and Mary, it takes the grace of God to see us through. Yes. Who do we have but God? And as you said, as we listen to him, he directs us. In the first place, Mary didn't choose to be the mother of Jesus. It was God who chose her. Yes. Our journeys, as you said, are individual journeys. And if God is for us, we'll definitely make it. So that's a very powerful, you know, analogy. We have uh, one of our great elders, Elder Poku Amos watching. God bless you, man of God. And one of our reverend ministers, Reverend Isaac Aban is also watching. God bless you, man of God. All of you are welcome to bring your questions and contributions. We are talking about the woman's journey to glory. So man, we're going to look at, you know, Matthew 2 and we, 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 that's where we are. And we are now going to look at the pain uh, you know, of the bereaved. You look at the Bible says that because of Jesus, you know, most babies were killed in that time because yeah. of Jesus. And that's the birth at that point when even he was frail, when he had not, his, his journey was not to take anybody's place, to take anybody's throne. His throne was a different kind. Bible says the government shall be upon his shoulder. So for his throne, it didn't need any boundaries. Wherever any person that can carry a boundary on his shoulder means that he, he's not limited by terrain or demography or anything. Wherever he is, his government is following him. So it's not like, you know, in the world where if you are a king in one part, you are not a king in the other. But this king, Herod should have known, was, wasn't a threat to him, but he didn't know. So when we want to look at that pain, where because of Jesus, children were killed. But at that time, Mary escaped it, but she didn't escape it till the end because at the foot of the cross, there she was. So I want us to look at that pain when you go to the book of John chapter 19. John chapter 19. Yeah. And I see we have another question. So let me, as we're going to John 19, we will look at that question also. So the question from our great elder and Katia says, how do we differentiate God's voice from all the other, but I think he's coming back, thinking about you know, what you said about what all that you were hearing was do nursing and you tried it and you were struggling. So it says, how do we differentiate God's voice from all the voices of mommy? Um, I think, you know, I mean, well, from, from scripture and from experience, you know, we have to spend time in prayer and everything that we do, every decision that we make, we have to spend time to pray. Um, we have to um, empty ourselves and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. You know, we have to pray that the Holy Spirit will open our ears that he can speak to us. And God can, can speak to us through revelations. He can, you know, say something to you and confirm it through people. So you just have to be sensitive to that. Um, when you are praying about something and you have your mind set on what you want to do, um, it's very hard for the Holy Spirit to speak to you because you already have your mindset. Um, remember there was, a, a lady who wanted to get married and she had the particular name of the person she wanted to get married to. So she was mm -hmm. for this person um, to get married to, but that wasn't the person who God wanted her to marry, but she just had it in her mind so much so that even if she was praying, if the Holy Spirit gave her another name, she wouldn't accept it. So mm. we have to free ourselves from any um, of our own desires and allow the Holy Spirit to genuinely speak to us. I um, mean, maybe revelations, maybe in your time of meditation, as you're reading scripture, mm. something would drop in your spirit um, and, and maybe reconfirm through people around you. So we have to be sensitive to the spirit. We have to be sensitive to the spirit. At the same time, we have to know that God also uses people to speak to us. Um, once you are in tune with the word of God, you're also in line with the Holy Spirit. When you mm. hear the voice of God, you know that it's the voice of God. You mm. 
can feel that it's the voice of God. You have um, a sense of joy because you know that, yes, this is indeed from God. And, and once you have that and you go in that direction, God also will show himself mighty. Um, sometimes in prayer, we ask, you know, we ask God something, he reveals it to us, and we ask for God to give us a confirmation to make sure that, yes, God, this is what you're really telling me. And God finds a way to give us that confirmation. But if we're not sensitive to his spirit, when he's telling us, when he's speaking to us, when he's revealing it to us, we won't see it, we won't hear it. So it's so important for us as believers, day in and day out, in the journey of life that we're going through, in the journeys that we're going through in our personal situations and personal issues, we have to empty ourselves, genuinely mm. empty ourselves, empty our thoughts, empty our hearts, allow the Holy Spirit himself to speak to us and allow his spirit to lead us in every aspect of our life. And um, we can that by so doing, God will show himself mighty and what he has destined for you and your journey shall come to pass. Amen. Amen. It's, it's very true. You're talking about having your own, you know, the, the, the proverb like that, that says that you have already slaughtered the fowl in your, <laughs> you know, there's a proverb like they're trying to say you've preempted God. You already have yes. your own agenda. You already exactly. have your own ideas and, you know, what I think, you know, it, it, when you were talking about when it comes to marriage, there's this story, there's a joke that was told me as a young lady and it spoke volumes to me. So apparently this young guy in the church was praying for a spouse. But he had targeted a specific young lady. And that young lady is the first person who normally comes to church to clean. So he said, he prayed to God and said, well, God, I want to be very sure that you are the one speaking to me. So I'm going to go to church to pray. And the lady comes to church on Sunday. She cleans and then she goes to get ready to come to church. So I'm going to be praying all night. So the woman that you are plan for me let her be the very first person who will come to church to clean mm -hmm. now the story goes as that day that young lady that he was expecting to show up was not feeling well mm -hmm. and in that church there was this old woman in the church so he pleaded with her to go and do it on her behalf so this young man has been having an all night and he started hearing somebody sweep. So he started, thank you, Jesus. You, you answered my prayer. And he spends time just worshiping and worshiping. So all this while, the woman was, you know, working from the back. And when she got to the front, he's finishing worshiping and thanking God. He opens his eyes. He sees the old lady and says, the devil is alive. <laughs> I said, the devil is no liar. You think you can outsmart God. No, you cannot. <laughs> but that's sometimes how we do. We have an, our own agenda. And we yeah. want to just say, you know, we are listening to God. But you, you said it. As we empty ourselves and rely on him and really surrender to him. And, you know, when we went to First Samuel chapter 16, that's what happened. Because Samuel was in the house of Jersey by the instruction of God. And so as he thought, to go ahead of God, God was able to tell him, no, you're looking at the outward. I'm looking at the inside. And afterwards, you could hear from the Bible's narrative that when somebody else would come, God would say, he's not the one until he would ask, are these all your sons? Because he knows God will never be false. And so mm -hmm. if God keeps rejecting each one of them, then definitely God has somebody. So something is wrong. If all these are just all your children, and Bible says, Definitely there was one and when he was brought. So as we begin to ar uh, arrive at that conclusion and realize that God will never make an error and we rely on him, then definitely we can discern his voice. Yes. So that's a very good question. Thank you so much. So I see a fresh Dickness from New York. Dickness, the Nubian Queen, Dickness Bernice Badu is on there. God bless you, dear. And Elder Sam is also here. God bless you, sir. Elder Ransom Damte is on there. God bless you, Elder. And there's a comment here that Prophet I want to bring to your attention. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. This is from the NIV. So it's, he says, distinguishing God's voice can be tough. So the most important key to discerning his voice from our own 
is a living, intimate relationship with him. Absolutely. It's a confirmation of what you were saying to my marriage. That, you know, in waiting on God in emptying, that's how we are able to really discern his voice. So let's go to John chapter 19 and look at verse 25 to 29. So standing near the cross where Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, the Mary, Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother, 26, standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. So we are looking at Mary's journey again. This is that woman who had to flee to Egypt to save her son and herself. And at the end, she's still at the foot of his cross. Talk to us about how to minimize, you know, bereavement. Because Jesus did something to help his mother. If there's a woman out there whose journey also has to do with a loss. I know you've gone through it. So mm -hmm. mommy, how can we help such a person? Um, just from, you know, even looking at the scripture, so when we look at the word of God, you know, the Bible says that the Holy, the, that Jesus, when he left, he didn't leave us alone, but he left us with, mm -hmm. he was there to comfort us. And I, you know, with every journey, like I said, God knows, um, God knows the plans that he has for us. And he mm -hmm. doesn't give us anything that is too big or too great that we cannot carry because mm -hmm. he equipped us with something that's so great and someone who is so great that has so much power, which is mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. So when we put our trust on the Holy Spirit, when mm -hmm. we come to the Holy Spirit in times of distress mm -hmm. and of loss, he is our strength. Um, sometimes when you, when I sit back and I reflect on myself and my sisters and how God has, has guided us thus far, it's only the Holy Spirit that's done it. It's no, we can't put our, our put it on any one person that this person is because of this person. No, it is the Holy Spirit that has carried us. So mm -hmm. just um, anyone who is facing a loss, who is going through that even now as we're speaking, or who's going through any level of distress or depression, mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be, lean on the Holy Spirit. The mm -hmm. Holy Spirit will give you the comfort that you need. He mm -hmm. is there for us. It is, he is who Jesus left us with when he died on the cross. It is he that we should put our hope and our trust in because he will give us the strength that we need to endure, that we will mm -hmm. stand from our, our situation mm -hmm. and we'll fight to his glory. So I am just going to continue to encourage anyone who is listening that the Holy Spirit is there for us. We need to, we need to tap into his spirit and allow his spirit to comfort us and to strengthen us. Yeah. God bless you. And, you know, when you look at, you know, talking about the Holy Spirit and you look at, you know, Jesus and his disciples, when you look at Mark chapter four, he calmed the storm. Mm -hmm. He spoke to the storm and the storm was calm. We have the word with us. We have the Holy Spirit with us. And, you know, I, I must thinking about what first Peter chapter three was saying that is if it's better it's better if we suffer if it's God's will for us. I, I think mm -hmm. I wanted to go to first Peter chapter three and just and just look at that for you know something. Verse 17 of First Peter chapter 3 says, For it is better if it's God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. But after being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits. I'm adding this to it to say the loss was not in vain. Mm -hmm. the loss was not in vain she's losing a son but that loss was not in vain and so as you were saying the holy spirit is able to make meaning to the loss for us mm -hmm. that's how we're able to endure that on earth we may have lost them but in a time to come we still see them and right. so as we are relying on the holy spirit he's able to make us you know have a meaning to what, what is happening he's able to to us there are so many things that we will never understand it all there are so many losses that you cannot explain but somehow the holy spirit is able to make you not cry all the time when you think about it he brings meaning to it and so that's also another way and i was also thinking about second corinthians chapter one so if i mean we can turn to that
when you go to the verse three, it says, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, yes. so that we comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the suffering of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we were, if we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. So, you know, so mommy, how do you look at the scripture in relation to, again to what she was saying, talking about, you know, when you're going through, you know, those bereavement and difficult moments? Just reading by, let me just read it. I'm, I, version, I'm reading from the um, NIV. Second, yeah, Second Corinthians chapter two, chapter one. one verse. And I read from verse three, and I was reading the NIV. It says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion. So, mm -hmm. you know, the emphasis is on his compassion and yes. God of all comfort, That's which right. we know the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is at work here, who comforts mm -hmm. us in all our troubles, troubles. emphasizing yes. that we go through troubles too, with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the suffering of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, just spending us pondering on the scripture as we we're reading. Um, enduring the sufferings and the persecutions with Christ, we as believers, we also endure, we also receive the glory that comes from those sufferings, just um, what we were talking about um, earlier. So it's important for us that, you know, we said a lot about, you know, the Holy Spirit being our comfort and the scripture here reminded us of that, which is very true, that in our times of suffering is the Holy Spirit who comforts us. Mm. He us not only for certain situations, but for all situations. Mm. He is. And as we are going through these persecutions as children of God, we have to mm. understand that we, we live with Christ. We live as Christ. We also mm. persecuted in the same manner. Mm. But that glory, that glory, that glory yeah. are so much, you know, going through all the troubles we're going through and enduring all the hardship we're going through to gain, mm. also receive that glory. And so we have to be strong in knowing that there is an end, and that end is mm. And oh, as we yeah. stand and endure in this suffering, that glory will also be our portion. That crown yeah. glory that we speak about day in and day out. This is what it, it, it gives us that reassuring that there is a glory to look forward to. And mm. as, that glory will also be ours. Very, very true. And, you know, as we are looking at that glory also, it says that the comfort we receive is so we can also comfort others because Jesus mm -hmm. tried to minimize the loss by providing for his mother at the foot of the cross, mm -hmm. meaning God is also using us as instruments for one yes. another. So through me, through you, through another person, a person who is bereaved, a person who is going through anguish is supposed to have comfort because the Holy Spirit is living with me. He is the spirit that comforts. And as he's nurturing us to be like him through the kindness that I show to a person who is grieving, through the goodness, through the, the standing with them by being faithful till the end, God is able to use me to comfort somebody. Because the Bible mm -hmm. says that when Jesus handed over over his mother to that disciple. Bible said he took her and she lived with him that day. Mm -hmm. So we can also, in somebody's journey to glory, in the moment of hardship, God can use us as an instrument to minimize pain and suffering. You know, yes. we're going to end as our time is fast, spent, but we want to look at when you look at the book of Luke 1, 41 to 44, and the New Living Translation says, and it happened when Elizabeth had the greeting of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. But 42 says, then she spoke out with the last voice and said, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, but why is this granted to me? That the mother of my Lord should come to me for indeed as soon as the voice of your green sounded in my ears the babe leaped in my womb for joy so we are looking at mary's favor after all the suffering look mm -hmm. at even what is happening is very profound so mommy yes yes it is very 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 profound like you were saying you know um even her presence alone mm. 
her presence alone, you know, could act, could, could ignite a baby in the womb of his, his, his mother. You know, that journey she, in, she was going through and she went through, that glory just shined all over her. Everyone mm. at her foot. She went through the hardship though, but the end was glory and she has been, and she was named blessed. And like you were saying before, because of Mary, the mother of Jesus, so many people have been called yeah. Mary. She will forever right. a name that we will mention. When we talk about Jesus, we talk about his mother, Mary, because God used her as an instrument to bring mm. Savior to this world. So yeah. just to reiterate what we've said um, in our discussion, that you go through a journey, you go through hardship. You go through um, transgressions. You go through so many things, so many things. And God uses those things to bring glory to you. Yeah. Allows you to stand and people look at you and say how blessed this blessed. is. And it is all because you endured and you did not allow that situation to overcome you. But mm-hmm. you became that situation and you strengthened yourself with the word of God and you allowed the Holy Spirit to lead you. Mary at any point in time could have said, you know what, this, all the insults that I'm going through, all the problems that I may be facing, I don't want to go through it anymore. So, you know, if any way I can let this baby out of my womb, let this baby out. But she took it all. She took it all because of the will of God. And by so doing, God showed himself mighty in her life. And he allowed his glory to shine upon her. That it was so much so that it was just a radiant light that even in her, when she walked into a place, you can, you can feel that glory. And that's what God does. When you put your trust in him and you put your hope in him and you allow him to do what he wants to do, God does that in our lives. When we talk about the Bible and we're referring to Mary, it's not something that's so far off. Yeah not only women of God, but men of God who can also attest to how God has showed his glory in their life. By by them only subduing themselves to him, allowing his word to live within them, walking in line with his word and allow his spirit to lead him. So it it is practical. And we can all partake of that. But we have to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in our journey. And we have to Take our our minds and our thoughts and our our desires out of it and allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do. And when we do that, that glory too will be our portion. Not Mm -hmm. that we will see one day, but the glory even now as children of God, we we should shine like a radiant light, even in the midst of darkness, in the midst of this dark world. If we allow the glory of God to to prevail in our lives and allow his will to, to lead us in our life, that glory will also be our portion. Amen, amen, amen. That's very powerful. And you know, we just said in our Christmas convention and we're looking at Jesus Christ as the light and we looked at what the light does, but the very profound thing is you said we should shine and and Jesus says, you are the light of the world. He's not Mm -hmm. now going to make us light. He's already made us the light. Mm -hmm. And that, that is, you know, the very profound portion of, you know, Jesus making sure Mary was catered for. And we are trying to say that whatever she went through, it wasn't in vain because she, she is shining. She's making an impact on Elizabeth and she stayed with Elizabeth for so long. And I'm thinking that was a blessing. But you know, when you go to the Bible and you look at Luke 11, 27 and Bible says, and it happened as he spoke. So Elizabeth feels the glory whilst he was in conception. But mm-hmm. whilst Jesus was speaking, as you said, the glory, we have, we become partakers of it. Because as Jesus was speaking, the Bible said, a settled woman from the crowd raised her voice and began to say, blessed is the womb that bore you and the mm-hmm. breast that nursed you. So, yeah. you know. As it happens in life, as you said, somebody is doing something and you feel so proud of them. And you are like, whose child is this? You you know, the woman, it's, there are so many people who have received awards and we've seen the appearance on the stage with them. And this was, was, was what was happening. Everything that was said about Jesus, he left us and he said, blessed is the woman that bore you. So yes. her glory is seen. And I see Mama Gertrude Jima is saying, very true, ma. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Nothing. This is so important for us, children of God. It's true. And Elder Renee Dalham from New York is on there. And you know, as we are ending, 
I wanted to look at what Haggai chapter 2, and when you look at 9, it says the glory of the latter days will be greater than the former. And when it was talking about the glory of the latter days, we've seen the glory that the tabernacle, the, um, you know, um, Solomon built. We saw how Bible describe how glorious it is. And so mm -hmm. if there's any other glory that will be greater than that, I want to be a part of that glory. And yes. you know in God, every glory with him is so beautiful. Yes. As we are ending, you know, last time we're talking about Hebrews also, where Bible said Jesus for the glory, he did not care about anything else. He was just looking at the cross because there yes. was a glory. And because of that, he's at the right hand. You look at Job also, his glory was beautiful. So I'm yes. going to close it with that. Yes. Um, God bless you, um, uh, Sophia, for allowing me to be on this line. I was late. I'm sorry, but I no. think God was able to partake um, yes, on this man. half of it. And I just want to encourage every man and woman of God on this line that you know, we all have our individual journeys. We all have the path in which God has prepared for us. And we just should continue to, even though we may face hard times, even though we may face um, challenges, we should just continue to build ourselves in the Lord, allow that situation, allow the, the spirit of God to overcome that situation and allow that situation to mold us to what God has destined for us. And then by so doing, and allowing his spirit to be our lead and allowing his word to be our guide. The glory of God will be ours on this earth. We shall experience that glory. And we should be that land, that light in this time of darkness. So I just want to appeal to everyone on the line who is listening that do not be ashamed of your journey. Do not be discouraged of your journey. Don't think that, you know, you have been in this situation for so long. But just know that God is with you and God has yeah. not left you. He will not forsake you. Maybe mm -hmm. something that may have taken someone two years to do is taking four years to do it. And But just know and trust that God is with you and everything that he is doing, he is with you. I said earlier um, about my schooling, for example, Something that took, should have took, taken me four years to do, it took me six years to do. However, I left school, I left with a job, I left with a career, and that career was a blessing to me and my household. And so I just want you to be encouraged that it doesn't matter what you're going through. Put your trust in the Lord. It doesn't matter your journey. Your journey is not like your sister's journey. It's not like your brother's journey, but it is your journey. But what God, had, the lessons that God has, has for you in that journey and allow his glory and his will to prevail in your life. And just as he's done it for myself, just as he's done it for Sofmami, as she attested, he shall surely do it for you. So may God bless you all and you all have a merry and blessed Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you so much. And other Kwame gets it says, God bless you all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. And it's very, very true. What we have tasted, what we have seen is what we are saying. God is faithful. The storms may come. The journeys are not always easy. They are never similar. Everybody's is different. But what is similar is with God in the boat, you will never capsize. With God with you, the storms will not swallow you. If God is for you, nobody can be against you. Herod may try and you will still be enjoying in Egypt. And Herod will leave and you will come back and enjoy. Mary is a very celebrated woman today because her journey was difficult. Yet with God, she made it. God bless you all. And, you know, we want to thank all those who have been with us. From the beginning until now, God richly bless all of you. And I want to thank Elder Sam at the studio for all that he always does. God bless you all. And all who, one way or the other, have helped with Mommy Henrietta, God bless you for always coming to, Amen. you know, join me. And I want to thank my husband. Thank There's a lot that he does for me to, you know, help with this. And I say, God bless you, dear. And, you know, we're going to take a little break from today's woman. We're going to be back on January 6th. And so for all of you who are always with us, today's woman is going to take a break and we'll be back, God willing, January 6th. We're going to be reloaded and coming back strongly. So mommy, if you could pray with us for all of those who are embarking on a journey for the glory of God to be seen. 
Yes, let us close our eyes in prayer. Our Lord and our Master Jesus, this afternoon we ascribe our glory and prayers unto your mighty name. Yes, we Lord. thank you, O Holy Spirit, for what you have done, Lord. We yes. thank you for your word this afternoon, Lord. Yes. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory, Lord, for this yes. unspeakable gift in Jesus in which you have bestowed oh, on us as your children. We are yes. so grateful unto you, Lord. We are yes. so appreciative unto you, Lord. We are praying in the name of Jesus, Lord. We are committing those who are listening, almighty God, that may be embarking in a journey that is beyond their understanding, beyond their control, beyond their strength. We are praying in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you who are, our, who, you spirit of the living God, who is our comfort, that you will comfort, almighty God, every individual that is facing any challenges in their life, that you will give them the strength that they need to stand and endure, Lord, that your word will continue to dwell within them, almighty God. And Lord, Father, that your glory will shine in their life. We are trusting in you and we know you will do it because you have done before lord you did it in your maid servant mary you have done it in our lives lord and you would do it for someone else we are right. in the name of jesus for anyone who is facing any challenge even as we're celebrating this christmas season as we are celebrating the life of jesus we are praying oh lord the lord father you will show yourself mighty and the children lord father the lord father that the son in which you've given unto us lord to be a light that light will dwell within us as your children that whatever we go, almighty God, people will see that light in us, Lord. We know you do it, oh Lord. So we say we thank you. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. We thank you, almighty God, for this live cast, almighty God. We pray the Lord, Father, you will continue to open our understanding, oh Lord. Continue to reveal great and mighty things to your maid servant, Lord, as she's availing herself, Lord, for us to be instrument to your people we are praying oh lord for your blessings upon her life upon the life of her family oh lord that whatever she has lost for our sake lord we are praying that you will finish it unto her tenfold and that your blessings will be bountifully upon her life everyone who plays a role almighty god and allowing this live viewing we are praying lord for your blessings upon their life lord bless almighty god and allow them to be a blessing to all we thank you, O oh Lord. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Mami Henry, your community of Tennessee, God bless you so God much. Bless you. Greetings to a man of God in the family. Yes. Thank you so thank much. You this is the Church of Renicus USA Radio, COP USA Radio. God bless all of you and God bless COP. Merry Christmas. And we'll see you, God willing, in the new year. God bless you all. Bye. Bye-bye.